You can use your practice tests as a reference. You can use any homework assignment, any notes, any quiz, anything you're still kind of wondering about. And I'm ready for somebody to ask me. All right, so who's who's got something somewhere on something? You? Like a, a non-calculated question. Okay. You need to get your practice tests out and you need to be a little more specific than that, okay? I will gladly do one, but there are lots of no calculator questions, so you need to find them. So look at the like the first practice test and tell me like this is the kind I want to do. Yes, Sandra. Um, the last practice test four are for E. Alright, so she's talking about a problem. This would be no calculator, something like this. The log base five plus three plus log base five two. Something like that. This is no calculator. Don't need a calculator for this. We do need to do something though before we can solve it. What's wrong with this equation? There's two logs on the same side. You can have two logs, but not on the same side of the equation. So we're going to put these together. How are we going to put them together? We're going to put them together as a multiply. So 2x plus 6. If that had been a minus, and that's the only way it's going to be. You're going to be added or you're going to be subtracted. If it's a minus, then you would have x plus 3 over 2. That is a times, so I'm just giving. All right, equal to. Now I only have one logarithm. What do I do when I have log equals a number? <laughs> so 5 squared equals 2x plus 6. And when we look through, this is the number we start with, right? Always. 5 to the second, which is 25. And then we can solve like a normal equation. So 25 minus 6. Pardon this interruption. Will all choir students please head to the WAC? So 19 minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Now, Sandra, is that okay? Yeah. That makes sense to you? Okay, now, right along with that kind of a problem, though, we could have this problem. I'm going to change it to a minus this time. You know, that kind of, well, yeah, that kind of a problem. Now, it's going to start the same way, isn't it? It's going to start by putting these together. Now, I made it a minus this time. So when I put it together, it will be that division. Don't let me go too fast. Is everybody following that? Same thing as over here. I'm putting them together. Now it's different though, because this one was log equals number. This one is log equals log. So what do I do here? I do not what you do. I drop the logs. So x plus 3 over 2 equals 4. And then I solve like regular, so multiply by, so x plus 3 equals 8, and x equals 5. So in terms of log equations, these are the only two kind we've looked at. So you get one log on each side, no more than one log on each side, and then if it's log equals number, you loop, you loop. If it's log equals log, you draw. Good. So, Jude, what did you find over there? Uh, just like a simple one, like uh, 4C. Okay. Are you on practice test one? Uh, I'm on practice test three. Three, 4C. Yeah. So, 4C is just an equation like 6 log x equals. I guess I can make it crazy. I think I won't go. Well, so 
sixth law and the obstacle is 12. What do we have to do first? Divide by six. This is one of our common themes. We always divide by that extra number. So log x equals two. Now I just erased it, but this is Sandra's problem. Sandra, after we got it all put together, we had log equals number, right? And what do we do when it's log equals number? The problem is we don't have a base, and that's what I have to start with. Or do we have a base? We do have a base. It is 10. When I don't see it, I know it's 10. So then we can say 10 squared equals x, so x ends up equaling 100. Now, there are also some like that, but instead of that, they look like this. Um, negative 4 ln x equals 2. We still divide by negative four. That never changes. We always get rid of that extra number. It's still log equals number, but this time the base of the log is e. This is log e equals negative two. So e to the negative two equals x. Luke, you we do not like negative exponents, so how can we how can we rewrite e to the negative second? One over e to the second. And remember, some of our answers will have e's in them, and that is perfectly okay. If we don't have a calculator, then it's perfectly okay to have e's. So who else? All the problems we've done. What kind of problem are you still a little bit shaky on? Yes. Wait, Booker's talking. He never talks. He sleeps most of the time. Which which one are you doing? Give me a problem number. Okay, give me the homework. Which homework is it? 3 6. Which problem? Number 3. Alright, so 3, 6, number 3, this is a homework question. When you were born 18 years ago, your parents put some money into an account paying 3.5% interest compounded monthly. Now, as soon as it says compounded monthly, I know that's my formula, right? Okay. The account is now worth... 34,567. How much money did your parents originally deposit? It was 18 years ago. So what am I looking for? How much money did your parents originally deposit? What am I looking for? P. Right? That's my unknown. I know I'm ending with 34,567. I don't know P. My interest rate is 0.035. Some of you are still messing that up. Never put the percent into the equation. You always have to make it a decimal. What's my N? 12, because I am compounding monthly. And it goes both places, just like the formula says, and times 18. Am I going to end up, you know, sometimes in these I use logarithms. Am I going to end up using logarithms? No. No, because I know that my exponent is 260. And the only time I use logarithms is when that's what I'm trying to figure out. I know it already, so I'm not going to use logarithms. Don't be frightened by this, you guys. I know it's a mess. But it's a very, very basic problem. You've got something, some number, equal to P times another number. Isn't this just some number? Can I use my calculator to find out this number? All right, so let's do that. Let's see what this number is that's connected to the P. 
So parentheses, 1 plus 0.035 divided by 12 raised to the 216. So that number is 1.8758 over the That's what I've got over here. How do I get P? What do I need to do to get P? I need to divide, right? It's a very simple equation. I just need to divide. I don't want to use any round off. I will count off on the test for round off error. Okay? You know, lose points. All I need to do, I, I, this, this thing is still on my calculator right here. I just typed it in. All I need to do is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 divided by second answer. And I don't have any round off error. So it's $18,426.99. Jacob? Answer. We've used that button before. It's right above your negative sign. It says answer, A and S. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's what we do when we don't want to round off. Now, your other option is you could go ahead and just do 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 divided by and type in that entire number the whole thing that's showing it. If you round this off to like 1.876 and then divide, you aren't going to get this. You're going to get close to it, but you're going to be off, and that's going to cost you an eighth of a point, which is dumb, because you get a button that just does it. All right, Xavier, does that answer that question? Okay, who else had something? There was another hand up when I called on Xavier. Yes, Jackson? So write the equation of an exponential function given a couple of points. So let's take the point 0, 07 and 356. Um, I did this problem last period, so I had that, I already figured that cut out. I can't just randomly make these up or it doesn't work out. Um, but that one I agree. So here we go. So I'm given these two points and I have to write the equation of the exponential function. Now, what do I start with? I start with my format. This is what an exponential function looks like. Don't find slope and all that junk, guys. That is a whole different problem. We need an A and a B. Well, one of those we already have. Which one do we have? A. And we know that's A, right? Every time, that's A. So I get half credit already. I mean, done anything, and I get <coughs> half credit if I got that. Now, how do I find B? Take the other point, which is an X and a Y, and plug it in the appropriate spot in my equation right here. So 56 equals 7b cubed. This is no calculator, so what are you going to do? Divide by 7. So 8 equals b cubed. So b must be 2. Now, if it's no calculator, guys, i got to keep the numbers reasonable, so don't worry about that. Do that work. Now, don't forget, after you've done all that, to write your answer. Your job was to write an equation. So y equals 7 times 2 to the x is what goes in the answer blank. Right? All right, who else has something? Homework notes, practice, quiz, something. Can we do one like a uh, test uh, 3F. Yep. So that's one of the big exponent simplifications. One of the big exponent simplifications. Um, so something like this. Let's say. Um, Now, 
I want you to do things the way it makes sense to you to do them. I find it easier all the time to forget that exponent and just clean this mess up right here. There's a lot going on in here. I'll deal with that later. I'm gonna clean this up right here. Nine and 16 do not reduce. Eight and 16 reduce. Four and 16 reduce. Nine and 16 do not reduce. I know they're both squares, that doesn't mean they reduce. How are my X's now? What's happening with these guys? Well, E is gonna go to the top. There's four of them up there right now, and eight of them are coming up. So that's gonna give you 12 of them. square root of 9, which is 3. So there's your final answer. You can go about that however you want, but that's the answer. So make sure, if you're going to sit down and do it your own way, just make sure that's what you come up with. Alright? Who else found something um, that we need to look at? Uh, you do 7C on a practice test ball. 7C. So that's an exponential, solving an exponential, and it is a calculator problem. Okay, so I don't have to rig it at all. I can just make something up. So let's say um, 4E to the 1.7X equals negative. So I'm going to make that negative 4, okay? So what do I do first? So e to the 1.7x ends up equaling 9 fourths. Now remember, this is a calculator problem, so I really don't care about fractions and stuff. What do I do now, though? Now I need logarithms. When you are solving for an exponent, logarithms. So I'm going to ln both sides because there's an e and I know when an ln and an e touch they cross out. 
So 1.7x equals ln 9 fourths. I want x, so I'll do ln 9 fourths divided by 1.7. And I should get as my answer 0.477. I can't remember when we did practice test three, the directions on practice test three were round to the thousandth. So you gotta pay attention to that because earlier it said round to the ten thousandth. So thousandth, if, if the test says round to the thousandth, that means you're going to three decimal places, right? 10,000th would be a fourth decimal place. Just try to pay attention to that. Now, okay, so is this okay? I can't remember who asked me this question. Okay, so you got that? Now, there is a very similar problem on the no calculator part. Something that looks like this maybe. Negative three times four to the x equals um, negative 24. So it's a very similar looking problem. But now I have no calculator. Okay, so what am I gonna do first? Same thing as before. So four to the x equals eight. If I had a calculator, I could log both sides and get my answer. What do I need to do if I'm solving that problem without a calculator? No logarithms, in other words. What do I need to do? Make them both the same base. These two have got to match. Because my objective is to set the exponents equal, right? Can't do that until the bases match. So I got a four and an eight. What's the common base for four and eight? Two. So four is two squared. Eight is two cubed. Two x equals three and x equals three halves. So without a calculator, you can't use logarithms. So you need to be able to get a common base. And the common base is usually two or three or five, you know, it'll be a simple number because you don't have a calculator. All right, what else? You have a test tomorrow. Your quarter grade is 40% of your semester grade. Right? We only have a couple tests a quarter. Counts a lot. Want to do well. Jude? Uh, they do number six, but it says they expand it. Yep. So, uh, using our properties of logarithms, we can either take a complicated expression like x to the fourth, y to the seventh, over z cubed, and expand it. Or we can take something that's already expanded, like log base 4, 3 log base 4 of x, minus 5 log base 4 of y, something like that. We can put that together. So this is called, this one's expanded. All the logs are pulled apart. This one, that's what they want you to do. They want you to pull it all apart. So you're going to have the, you're going to have a log of x, a log of y, and a log of z. When you expand, you're going to have a log for each letter. So I like to start by just writing them down. I'm going to have a log for x, y, and z. That's my expansion. So now I have to fill in everything else. So what, what am I going to fill in here? Well, what signs are going to go in between here? Let's start with that. These two are being multiplied, so that's going to be a plus. That's being divided, so that's going to be a minus. And then what happens with those exponents? Where do they show up? They show up out in front. So 
4 log x, 7 log y, 3 log z. And that's it. That's expanded. This is the opposite. If you're putting this back together, you're going to have one logarithm. Well, what's going to go in that parentheses here? going to have an x over y because it's clearly a division problem because of the minus. minus. And then what do I do with the 3 and the 5? Exponents. They become exponents. x cubed, y plus z. Pretty easy. Okay, what else? A, a big mistake that happens is I give you some kind of equation like 5 times 0.8 to the x, okay? And I'll say it's that growth of decay, and everybody says it's decay, because it is, right? And then I'll say what's the percent decay, and people will say 0.8. 20%. 20%. is the correct answer. D. Percent decay is how much less than one this number is. This number is 0.2 less than one. And 0.2 is 20%. Not 0.2%, not 0.8 at all. It's 20%. Everybody got that? Easy points. Okay. Right, what else? So your job, get this is no calculator, no calculator. Your job is to figure out or simplify log 10. What does log 10 equal? How do you know it's 1? Because there's a exponent of log. So kids, here's the, the problem. You can look at this a couple of different ways. She said, I am looking at it as the log of, excuse me, the log base 10 of 10 to the first, when these two numbers match, that's the answer. It's perfectly okay to do the problem that way. That's a great way. That's a property way of doing it. That's perfect. Somebody else might say, look at it as 10 to the x equals 10. And don't you get one as your answer? Either way. So however it works for you. Now this one, I hope you're not doing anything to this one except that. So the answer is 4. Alright, what about this one? The answer is negative 1. I'm not sure why you want me to do these for practice because you know them all. The answer is negative 1. Either because you loop de loop it, 3 to what power is 1 over 3? Some of you struggle with that, and you shouldn't. One over is an absolute clue that your exponent is negative. That's what one over is, a negative exponent. So three to the negative first. Some of you might say, okay, the original problem is 
log base 3 of 3 to the negative first, because 1 third is 3 to the negative first. These cancel and leave you with negative 1. Somehow you got to come up with negative 1. Same thing here. You can do it and say 5 to the x equals 25, so the answer is 2. Or you can rewrite the original problem as log base 5 of 5 squared. And the answer is 2. Right? So, first thing that's really problem, first thing you should figure out which formula it is. Clearly, it's a hurt because not money. I know I'm ending with 2000. I know I'm starting with 193. I know my growth rate is 0.234. And I want to know how long it took for that to happen. So the minute I put that T there, I know I'm going to eventually need logarithms, but not first. What am I going to need first? Divide by divide. So 2,000 divided by 193. You cannot have that number in that spot. You need to get rid of that number, so we're going to divide it out of the problem. So now I have 2,000 over 193 equal to e to the 0.234t. Because the problem has an e in it, as perts do, I will ln both sides. The only way, the only way to find that is to use a logarithm. I'm going to use the base e logarithm so that that will cancel. So ln 2000 divided by 193 equals 0.234t. And then regular equation, how do I get t by itself? Divide. So I take the logarithm, close the parentheses, divided by 0.234. And I got 9.992 years, or sometimes the problem will say days, sometimes it will say months, I don't know, I just made that up. Is that okay with everybody? Jackson, are you getting 9.992? Then we're going to mass, okay? We sit together. So since we got so many absent, we should have plenty of room. Okay, my last comment is, in this problem, let's say I knew the time that I was solving for the R. Would I solve the algorithms? Yes. If it's a money problem, R is the interest rate, right? So if it says find the interest rate, and you do the math here, and it comes up with something like 0.0736, then when you answer the question, if it says find the interest rate, then you're going to answer the question as 7.36%. 
right? So just make sure after you do all math that you actually answer the question that you're asking. Okay, so we are sitting once again in the freshman section. I know, clear over the farthest, you know, next to the wall over there. One, two, three, four. We are in the fifth and sixth row up. Okay, so you count up to either the fifth row or the sixth row. Those are our two rows from the bottom in the last section over there. So strife, strife, fogel, fogel, forward, forward. All right, that's how it goes. So strife has two rows, fogel has two rows, we have two rows. We have all of our stuff here, including our phones. There's absolutely no reason to have a phone at church. 